This is an ejection seat model I've designed that uses rockets to launch an action figure from an RC plane. Ejection seats are very complicated things, so this is the first video in a new little mini-series going over the design and development of a working ejection seat model. The seat is made from a mixture of 3D printed and laser cut plywood parts with motor mounts bolted to the sides. It has guides for launch rails at the rear and straps to hold a volunteer scaled down test pilot securely in place. Now, because I'm not going to be strapping myself to this seat, obviously, I'm going to need a small-scale test pilot, so I enlisted the help of Action Man. That's right, I actually purchased an Action Man for this project. <laughs> you might notice he's a bit charred around the edges already. Uh, yes, you'll see why in a minute. Hopefully, he provides some comedic value for this and future projects. Uh, so, yeah, if, if you want to name him, by the way, Comment down below, I, uh, I need a better name than just Action Man. The funnier the better. Anyway, I've started work on a new large EDF jet for this experiment, but firstly I had to design the ejection seat and get it working on the ground. Initially, while starting this project, I had to decide on the propulsion system. One simple idea was to use springs. This was actually how some German ejection seats were fired into the air during World War II. Some other early seats used compressed gas. This was another thought I had. Perhaps I could make use of small CO2 canisters like this one, which could release a burst of compressed gas to power my ejection seat. I ended up designing the seat around model rocket engines for versatility, simplicity and because that's what I think you and I both want to see. A massive thank you to all of my Patreons for helping me to afford all of these rocket engines, by the way. I needed motors with a very short burn time, but with enough thrust to lift the 450 gram seat to around a meter into the air. This A motor produces around 860 grams or 8.3 newtons of max thrust. Using two, I thought, should have been sufficient to lift the seat, but the first test showed me I had something wrong. Three, two, one. Yes, so a little underwhelming, but at least I had a starting point to analyse and work from. As you can see from the slow-mo, the motors actually went off at different times. This is confirmed by the parachute charges next igniting separately and setting fire to Action Man in the process. Ooh. Bit of a uh, nasty one, that. <laughs> so, apart from making sure to better protect Action Man's arms next time, I had to change a few things. Firstly, I dramatically upped the size of the rocket motors to some I had lying around, just to make sure he actually got off the launch pad this time. I also altered the thrust angle to fire in the direction of the launch rails, as well as through the center of mass, as before. So, it was time to head back out to test the new oversized motors. <laughs> Well, he certainly left the pad this time. Predictably though, the flight was a little uncontrolled. With the relatively long 1.6 second burn time and zero stabilization, the motors were firing for too long and spinning the model out of control like a Catherine wheel. I'm not sure if the G-forces would have been that survivable. Need to check for life signs. Seat looks a bit worse for wear. Adjusting the thrust angle slightly and adding some more weight to the seat so it wouldn't accelerate as quickly, I repeated the test, but the results were quite similar. So at this point I was pleased with the ejection velocity and the height achieved, but I needed to refine the ejection by finding a motor combination with the right burn time and specific impulse to achieve the velocity and height that I desired. I returned to the A32T motors, clustering them together in pairs for twice the thrust of the first test. If they were all to go off at once, the seat would have a max thrust of 3.4 kilograms, or 33.2 newtons, for just a brief moment. Perfect! The seat travelled 2 metres into the air, with the short burn accelerating up to around 9 metres a second. Ooh. 
This sudden kick with an unpowered arc through the air was just what I wanted to see, as next I could work on adding parachutes that could be deployed during this free-falling tumble. The parachute ejection charges might come in useful with this, but for now they only resulted in a slightly crispy action man. Okay, so the ejection seat can lift Action Man into the air successfully and hopefully help him clear the tail of the aircraft when he's actually in the air. But what about parachutes to return him safely to the earth? Real ejection seats use an extremely complex array of mechanical triggers that result in a chain reaction of events going from canopy ejection all the way to chute deployment and seat separation. My ejection seat is going to be a boiled down version of this with a three-stage procedure. Firstly, the ejection seat will leave the aircraft. Secondly, a drogue parachute will be released from the rear of the ejection seat, which will catch the oncoming air and stabilize the descent. Finally, Action Man will be released along with his main parachute, at which point he will float down gently to the ground to live another day and uh, yeah, hopefully remain in one piece. To start with, I made the drogue parachute system. The way this works is quite simple. The chute is folded up and stored in this space at the rear of the seat where it can be tugged out with little resistance. Like with some early seats, this chute is designed to be ripped out by a cord reaching the end of its line. So I used a rubber band slipped over this bundle to pull it from its stowage space. You might have noticed that I'm developing this project step by step and test by test as a sort of evolutionary process. To that end, before jumping ahead, I wanted to give the drogue parachute a test to see if it works in its own right. This involved making a quick release mechanism on the underside of a Balsa Basic Supercub that I had lying around my workshop. Next, I could travel up to the test flight field to see whether the tether cord system would work in the air. Right, hopefully this works. Oh, well the seat's kind of fallen over. I lined the plane up coming towards me and then flicked a switch to release the seat. Yay! It worked! <laughs> The cord pulled the chute out and stabilised the seat successfully. Mission success. Right, let's bring it in for a landing. Moving on to the way that Action Man is released from his seat, I'm considering using the ejection charges from the motors to burn through the straps holding him in place on the seat. This would have the advantage of being completely automatic, it's just part of the process, and it's also nice and simple. Let me know if you have any ideas of your own in the comments down below. I split this project up into multiple parts so I can go into the details a little bit more and uh, yeah, spend a bit more time on the whole thing, getting it working properly. I hope that you like this format and want to see more multi-part projects split up into shorter and more frequent videos. While you're waiting for the next part of this video to come out, maybe you should check out Skillshare, who are the sponsor of this video, to learn a new skill or perhaps even learn about something that might help you build an aeroplane, hydroplane, rocket or ejection seat of your own. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that can teach you core skills for your own projects. These classes would be perfect for you if you're interested in learning more about science, technology, engineering, or perhaps making your own videos about what you create. There are loads of classes on using camera gear and capturing great looking cinematic video, for example. This class by Nathaniel Drew, a YouTuber I watch, is all about capturing what you do and sharing it on the internet. I love the way that Nathaniel dives deep into his creative process and how he applies that to running a successful YouTube channel. There's a class here on aerial videography as well, which I'm currently watching to up my game with the DJI Mavic I use in the these videos. Skillshare is curated for learning with zero ads, making it the perfect learning platform to stay focused and work on building up your skill set. There are some new premium classes dropping all the time, so for just less than $10 a month, you really get a lot. The first thousand people to sign up using the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. So yeah, have a look at that if you want to. And uh, yeah, you'll also be supporting my channel. So thank you again to Skillshare for supporting my channel and for sponsoring this video. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.